Hi, my name's Adam Cleary. I'm the uh, team librarian here at Borough, uh, Borough Satan uh, Library, the main public library in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And today I have with me Tony Sparrow, the renowned paranormal investigator, uh, who's the current uh, director of the uh, New England Society for Psychic Research and also the son-in-law of uh, the famous paranormal investigators, uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren. In fact, uh, Tony just did a demonstration, uh, uh, you know, slideshows and, and movies and whatnot about the, their files, and uh, it was it was pretty chilling. There was a there was there was a handful of uh, Tony style humor, but it was also uh, uh, pretty chilling. And if you missed it, don't worry, uh, you'll get another chance to see it because uh, you'll be at a Southern yes. on November second at eight p.m. And if I'm not mistaken, last time I checked, uh, tickets are still yes. available. Tickets still awesome. Available. So Tony, thank you very much for. Uh, thank you. Yeah, coming around uh, awesome so I yes. uh, definitely want to we, we don't have uh, too much time but I want to uh, delve into uh, your work but first um, I was hoping you could uh, uh, comment I understand you worked recently with the Make-A-Wish Foundation yes, to did. make a little girl's fondest wish come true if you I could did. just make a, yes. a statement about that yeah I was contacted by the mom of Vicki who said that her young daughter seven years old wanted to see the Annabelle doll now Normally, under normal circumstances, I'd say, no, I don't like to have a young girl see the Annabelle doll, but uh, this was for the last, you know, one of her wishes. She was a terminally ill patient. Mm. I'm not going to go into her conditions, but there, it's a terminal illness. And I said, absolutely, absolutely, I'll show her the doll and I'll show her the museum because it's a wish of a seven-year-old girl. I'm going to say no. Um, so I did. I did it and I fulfilled her wish and she was super, super happy. They, they actually drove out from Colorado to see the museum, to see Annabelle. She came in with a little Annabelle doll in a, in a box, small like this, and she said, well, I can't take it out of the box because Annabelle belongs in the case. So that was kind of cute. That's cute. And that, that's awesome of you and awesome of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It's a yes. great organization. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, I'm actually in an interesting position. I've only been at the library two weeks, but mm -hmm. I do know about Lola. Lola is our ghost on the in the back stacks in the sixth and seventh floor mm -hmm. other than that i don't know much about it now obviously you can't respond to every case that comes to you because lots do right. and because some are fake mm -hmm. so what kind of evidence case would i have to present to you if you were to investigate lola yeah you'd have to sort of document it in a way and how you would document it would be through uh, eyewitness accounts okay through photographic evidence if you can and through audio evidence if you can. In other words, if I went to investigate Lola, I would take a digital recorder with me. We used to use cassettes back, back in the day. I would take an audio recorder and I would ask. First I would protect myself. You use the white light of protection around you. And then I would ask, is there a spirit here? Is Lola here? Is your name Lola? And I would wait 15 seconds between questions. Lola, is there a message you'd like to give us? And I would wait to let her answer. And sometimes if you play back the, the audio, you'll hear a voice, you'll hear a whisper, you'll hear an answer. You may hear, I'm seven, I'm eight, I was murdered, whatever, you might hear an answer. Yeah. Uh, or photographic evidence, setting up a, uh, a time lapse kind of a thing with a camera, trying to document, maybe calling in a psychic, a psychic who can tell us about Lola, communicate with Lola. I'm not psychic, so I couldn't do it. But that's how you would try to approach something like that, through evidence that you could try to verify what it is here. Is it an earthbound spirit? Sounds like if it's not bothering anyone, or if you just hear a noise, a sound, a flitter out of the corner of your eye, it's an earthbound spirit. Yeah. It could be, a little, could be a little girl that had passed on and maybe liked the library and wanted to hang out in the library and didn't know enough to go towards perhaps the light. Maybe her favorite books are somewhere maybe, up there. Maybe, maybe so. That's that's absolutely true. That's cool. Now, what what motivates you? What what pushes you in this line to, to devote so much to this line of work? Helping people, uh, because Ed taught me a lot. And what he taught me was that when somebody needs help, you have to help them. Why did Ed do it? And this is why I do it. Ed do it did it because Ed did it because he lived in a haunted home in Bridgeport here here in Bridgeport from age 5 to age 12, he grew up on Jane Street and he wouldn't go into the house if no one was home after school. He was so frightened. He would hide under the 
the vegetable carts back then that the old Italian men had when they sold vegetables. So in the wintertime when they were abandoned, he'd hide under those carts, looking up at the house, waiting for a light to come on. When the light came on, he knew he could go in. He was tormented by an old hag woman that he and his twin sister both saw coming out of the closet, looking, peering at him. He would hear a footstep, footsteps coming up the stairs towards his bedroom with a cane hitting the stairs. And his grandfather, who had passed away, had a cane and used to walk up the stairs tapping with the cane. But his grandfather died. But then even after that, he could hear that coming up the stairs. So he was a fright, you know, as five or six, seven year old boy, sure. that's very frightening. So when he was about 17 years old, he joined the Navy on his 17th birthday, and he knew Lorraine already. He said, Lorraine, when I get out of the Navy, I'm going to find out if other people have the same problems I had, and I'm going to try to help them. So he used to read a magazine called Fate Magazine, which had a lot of interesting and weird and mysterious stories, hauntings. Mm -hmm. And he would find these places on, uh, in the book, and then he'd try to go to these places and investigate them. That's, that's pretty cool. Of course, just about everything in the life of Ed and Lorraine is, in my opinion, pretty cool. Yes. That's cool. So um, I was, uh, I was do, do you, uh, in your uh, demonstration, and I've also seen a few other interviews that you were in, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're obviously a very religious man, yes. so am I. Uh, would you go as so far as to say that this work is a, is a mission or a vocation? Absolutely. Absolutely it is. See, I'm retired from, from a regular job. So I don't have to worry about going to a nine to five job. I do a lot of my uh, assistance of people via the telephone, mm -hmm. via email, because you can't be everywhere at once. I'm only one person. We have a small team of about eight people, and you can't go everywhere. And we don't charge, just like Ed. I learned from Ed. Why would you charge your family for trying to help them? It's not what we do, because what happens if you charge people to you decrease your credibility? People will say to me then, oh, you're only doing it because the house isn't even haunted, but you're going because you want the money. Not true. We go because we qualify the people. We believe there's a haunting going on, yeah. and then we'll go. <clears throat> if it's far away, like say it's in Ohio, <clears throat> we'll try to get expenses out from the people, like gas money, but if right. they don't have the money, we'll go anyway. So people cannot say to us, you're in it for the money, because we're not. Right, that seems like the type of thing a charlatan would do. A yeah. charlatan would ask for money up front. And a lot of people, a lot of these ghost clubs and a lot of psychics ask for money. Now, Lorraine used to say to me in, in, the, in the crowds, if a psychic asks you for money, don't go to them because that's all they want. What they'll do is they'll say, come to me and I'll help you. I need you know, $100. So you give them the money, then you go to them and they'll say, well, you know, this curse is a lot worse than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost you another 500 for me to remove that curse. And they would keep sucking the person in to come back and get more money from them. That's not the way to do it. That's charlatanism. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, uh, <coughs> this may be the librarian in me, but I know, I, I believe that the best way to know a person is to know what they read or watch, whether those are books or magazines, whether that's movies or the theater. Uh, what, for your pleasure, do you like to read? Well, I, I read, uh, well, I read all of Ed Moraine's books. and. Uh, I used to read Robert B. Parker, believe it or not. Do you know who Robert B. Parker I is? don't know. Robert B. Parker was a mystery novelist. Nice. Very, very good. Now, you should get some of his books. And if you looked on TV, you'll see Jesse Stone movies with Tom Selleck. Robert B. Parker was a fantastic writer. You'll have his books here somewhere. They're, they're fiction, but yeah. they're, he's a Spencer for hire. Spencer novels. So that's one of them. You know, when I was a kid, I read those kind of uh, other books like Catcher in the Rye and things like that. Read the Bible. Uh, the Bible is the most awesome book there is. I don't understand a lot of it, but I read it. And uh, magazines, I'll read all kinds of magazines. I'll read also Hot Rod magazines because I'm, in I'm into cars, so that kind of thing. Nice. Awesome. Well, Tony, thank you very much for uh, being here. Adam, the next, uh, the next uh, event thank that Tony's you. in, he's going to be uh, Southern Connecticut State University, November second. Yes. Uh, that's uh, is the co college is in New Haven. That's going to be uh, November second, eight p.m. And uh, I'm Adam Cleary, and uh, at Borough State Library in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Thank you very much for watching us today. All the best. Thank you.